What's interesting to me is there is a tradition in families, a military tradition. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And obviously in your family, it's continued on. Uh, well, my father, yes, he's he's a Vietnam veteran. Yeah, uh, and, yeah I met uh, him. Yeah, you met him in the first ride. That's right. My grandparents are both uh, World War II veterans. You know, our oldest, Antonio, uh, who you met. Uh, yeah, I met in him. in Afghanistan right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you've been to Afghanistan? Twice, yes, sir. And uh, what's the difference between you being in Afghanistan and your son being in Afghanistan? It's a lot easier to leave than to watch him leave. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I guess you can get left behind in more ways than one. You can get left behind geographically, and you can get left behind mentally. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And when you get when you get deployed, you start you have a focus all day, every day, and it usually has nothing to do with what's home. Mm -hmm. You have you know your mission, and so it's um, it kind of maybe even creates more of a separation for those home. Yeah. We, there's there's no yeah. there's no argument against the fact that when you go and and deploy, you know, you, you come back different. You change. You actually get to yeah. uh, whether it's through experiences or through injury. Um, a lot of us come back different. You yeah. know, we're not broken, we're just, just a little bit different. Yeah. I guess the key question that uh, people will be listening to this is, uh, uh, is there an answer to post-traumatic stress? Uh, in other words, a wife, hu the husband comes back and the wife is wondering, is this a new person and how do I deal with it? Or, uh, you know, a soldier comes back and has got post-traumatic stress and says, I don't want to talk about it. And we think there's an answer, and I think one of the reasons I think there's an answer is because I know you two. Yeah. Well, well thank you. Yeah. I, I believe there is an answer as well, you know, and, and being uh, a spouse uh, of a returning, you know, it's so much easier to watch her deploy than, it, you know what I mean, than it was to my, watch my son. The hardest part about, like, you know, the commonality we had was, was sharing post my strength. Obviously, that's not something I wanted to share with, with my spouse, you know, with my wife. But um, I was able peer to peer to help others. Yeah. But our connection was so close that it was it was almost right. impossible for me to help her. So you're helping others, and you're helping others. Yeah. Right. But we. Right. But I. But, you know, but both I, of you figured out how to help yourself. Yes. Yeah, but not necessarily each other yet. I don't. I think that right. what we have learned is being there for each other yeah. is the most important thing. Is there a noticeable difference? So if you had to benchmark uh, post traumatic stress in your life. And uh, and today, is there a noticeable difference? From, yes. For, for me, yes. Yes. For both of you. Yes. Yeah. I realized for my benchmark, it was when I finally took onus of my own situation and faced my own fight. And then when she finally decided to Same. do it on her own, I couldn't push her. I, all I had to do as a spouse was let her know that I'm here to support her. And that you love her. And that I love her. Yeah. And. And she found it. She found the the strength that everybody has. Everybody has the strength to fight post traumatic stress. There's no yeah. doubt about it. But facing it and owning it. Um, same thing. Obviously, I noticed the difference with him. But I noticed the difference in myself. Exactly the same time, really, is when I finally found the strength that, even though I was telling all of my soldiers and telling people all the time, no, it's the, the strongest thing is to get help. The strongest thing to get help. But inside my mind, I was like, stop being so weak. You don't need help. Uh, stigma for you. So, now, so you're commanding troops. I was. I, I was a platoon sergeant. My last job, I was a detachment sergeant before that. Um, and Which I, means how many people? Were um, anywhere from 20 to 42 in general. Um, last year was the first time I had to take my armor off. Uh, it's about talking about myself. Um, it's really easy to tell people and even share my story early on as long as I was in uniform and it was for somebody else. Um, but it took me a long time to get there and I will say like I was just always afraid that I was going to be looked at as a poor leader and yeah. it wasn't like I couldn't come out and, and really share my story until I had established myself as a leader in that environment. Um, but I'm, I'm, I think it's important for us to, you know, even those of us that have fallen victim to the stigma and we, we live that life for so long, we have to go out there and break it. And whether it's after service or that was one of the reasons for my retirement ceremony, I asked for special permission to have it at my unit, which is not normal, because I wanted to talk to my soldiers um, in uniform and tell them, a lot of them had never, they, they knew me, but they didn't know me. And so I wanted to tell them, you know, you guys look at me as this big, strong leader, but let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. I have PTS, and it took me a long time to address it, and I just wonder what, what a good leader I could have been had I addressed it earlier. And then I think I even mentioned to my senior leaders, and I'm like, and Sergeant's Major, 
and ladies and gentlemen, you need to do it too. There should not be a fear to, to no. say you have it. It's not yeah. a it's not a it's not a weakness. Every single no. person is vulnerable, and post traumatic stress is not a veteran issue either. It's a human right. issue. Right. And, you, know. you know. And one of the things that's very important for our veterans to know that there are peer to peer groups yes. full of people like you two, who are capable of saying. Uh, you can handle this. I dealt with it, and you can deal with it. Oh yes, peer-to-peer yeah, -peer networks provide yeah. resources. They provide information. You know, that's, I think that's the biggest part of peer-to-peer -peer is, you know, I don't know what I don't know, but my buddy may, or yeah. my mm -hmm. wife may, or someone else may, and then and sometimes it is towards, you know, seeking medical attention. And, and so the, it just makes it okay too, because some people think, oh, I can't, but yeah, when yeah. they find out you have, yeah, yeah. it opens the door. Well, that's certainly what the Bush Center is trying to do. Right. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Figure out what works, what doesn't work, and. Um, and help people get the help they need. It's not a weakness. No, no, you know, no. It, takes, it takes courage and strength to actually face it. I've, I've deployed nine times, I had a 21, 21 year career. Anybody who's serving me, I think, you know, I got a pretty, pretty okay reputation. The hardest thing I ever had to fight was PTS, and, and yeah. I face it and fight it every single day. That's strong, very strong. Yeah, that's, uh, that's called leadership. And, and uh, you know, the amazing thing about life is you just don't know whose life you're gonna save or improve.